So welcome to today's podcast. I'm really excited you're joining us uh, today. I've got a special guest, uh, and so you'll, you'll, you'll learn quite a bit about uh, our guest, John Papaloni. Um, I had uh, the fortune to meet him uh, last year, and I, I had to bring him on and to share his uh, history, his experience through his life and his journey through entrepreneurship in all hosts, in all, all different facets of life. Um, he's the CEO of Papaloni Capital Media. He's a mortgage agent. He's got his own podcast, The John Papaloni Show. He's got a lot going on. He's got a lot of energy. I really enjoyed meeting him, and I wanted to bring him on here to share more about his journey through uh, entrepreneurship and how it shaped his life. And uh, I'm really, hopefully, I know you're going to get a lot of benefit from this. So, John, so thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to uh, have our conversation. It's awesome. I, I'm, I really enjoyed our, our connection last year. And, you know, it's funny, I was looking in, in your past a bit and you're actually the first guest I've had from outside the United States, which is great. You know, our friends from the north here in Canada. So Oakville, right? Ontario. So that's awesome. Sure. It looked so beautiful there. It's, it's, I'm, I know why people probably want to live there. Um, just gorgeous, gorgeous. And I, I was mentioned before we started recording here, we have a connection too. You were on a uh, a TV show, uh, Agent on Duty, is that correct? Oh yes, that's right. Uh, R- Rogers TV. Oh um, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is interesting. It yeah, was a I'm fun sure experience, I, to be honest. Yeah, because I, I know you have uh, background media and all this stuff too. So, how did what was that all about? Um, it was an opportunity. I saw the person who uh, was the host was looking for a uh, guest to like, she was looking for a couple extra guests and all that. I had her on Facebook. So I messaged her. We had a conversation and we had a couple ideas on how I can contribute and stuff. And uh, it was a bit of a drive out there for me. And, but I thought, Hey, you know what? I've always been into the media stuff. Uh, it's like, my dream was uh, to be a radio guy. And uh, so there was a, like a little attribution for me. I mean, I was never after the video portion or the TV portion of life. It was more audio, which is radio. And But then, hey, you know what? TV is just a whole different level. And I thought I wanted to do it. And I figured it was, you know, agent on duty. It's all about real estate, which was my background. Yeah. So I thought it was a perfect fit. It was, um, you know, a great opportunity, a great opportunity to network with other uh, people in the industry and uh, share opinions and uh not just opinions, but share experiences as well. So it was a good connection, a good, uh, it was a good time. That's fun. That's fun. Listen, I think we, we always need some spice. I, and, and I was saying the connection, we were, uh, my wife and family and I were on uh, the Property Brothers show. Oh, know, got with, it. Uh, Jonathan, Drew, Scott, out of, out of their basement. They're from Canada, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I think they were out of Vancouver. Vancouver or something. Yeah. So we, that was our, uh, you know, 90 minutes of fame. <laughs> was super fun and, and a tremendous family uh, sort of memory. So kids were tiny then. So anyway, right. and real estate related. And so we're connected that way. So it's yeah, awesome. true. That's awesome. So as I always mentioned to you, to, you know, as we get into 2024, one of the two of the big themes uh, 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 that the podcast will be centered on this year is around very broad topics. One is protection, right? We're protecting our, our wealth, our mindset, our health. Right. We have to protect that. We got to own that. And, and that sort of jumped into the second part is ownership is around controlling our, our lives and, and what we can control. Obviously, there's a lot of things in this world we cannot control or, or impact. Um, so it, for me, I've tried to ignore them because it's just a waste of my time. Um, so what we can control are certain things, and that's our, our direction in life. Uh, what we get to do every day, who we get to interact with. So I'm really grateful to interact with you today, John. And so with that in mind, I know you have such a, a interesting, deep sort of history with entrepreneurship and different areas of, of, of business and life and, you know, good times, bad times. So I want to have folks learn from you. So let's start with there. Like, how did it all start with you? I mean, you've been a serial entrepreneur for so long. You just, that just didn't wake up one day to be one. So how did this all start for you? Um, well, I think the main component here is that I have trouble taking orders. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so one of those things that if I have an idea, I just want to do it. Like if we make an idea, I'm not one of those guys that like there's people out there that have to plan it. They, uh, you know, have this long history before they get to starting. I'm one of those guys that if we had a conversation mm-hmm. here and we had an idea that we were mutually interested in, I'd have business cards by tomorrow morning. Like that's how fast <laughs> I am. Right. So it's one of those things that I'm just like really go, go, go kind of guy. And then when everyone else, 
like I used to be told growing up, I was too aggressive. And mm. um, I'll be honest, I tried toning down and that didn't go very well. Um, not just for my own mental, whatever, but um, I found that everyone has a different component that makes them click. Yeah. And really my, what my discovery is, I found that my aggression is actually what makes things happen. Somehow it works. I think the reason people say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm too aggressive is because my aggression makes people uh, like that I'm dealing with or doing business with. It forces them to be accountable. Some mm-hmm. people like to just hold back, think about it, wait around. And then, you know, unless you, you know, people like to be chased, right? But it's one of those things that you're doing business. I'm not dating you. We're doing business. I'm not chasing you. To be honest, I don't even chase people I date, but that's not the point. You know what I mean? Like, it's just the point is that, like, when you're doing business with with someone, you either want to do it or you don't. There's none of this. Think about it. I'll wait till later. Think about it to me means either I'm scared to do something or I don't want to do it and I just don't want to say it. There's no in between for me. Yeah, it's it's fascinating because it is a a nature where, and me being, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum in a lot of ways. And I've had to force myself to kind of, to, to, to do and experience so you can gain that um, uh, knowledge and education because you can just sit around thinking about these things till you're in the ground, right? And some people will do that. Like you're going to kind of go for it and then learn from it and then progress yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like for me, the worst thing you can do is tell me to wait. Because usually when we have an idea, I meant why haven't we done it already? <laughs> it's not one of those, uh, you know, okay, how long is it going to take? I mean, I'll ask you, how long is it going to take? Because I'm being polite. I mean, why haven't it, why isn't it done already? Yeah. So it, it, it's just, again, that's my aggressiveness. I'm snap, 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 go, go, go. Um, it drives me nuts when it takes time. And now there's certain things I know I can't rush. But um, like prime example, if we had a project we were doing and just say it physically takes 30 days for people to be able to put it together and get it done. Those 30 days will drive me nuts. Like I want it done tomorrow morning. Yeah. And I know some things aren't, it's impossible. You can't build a house in 24 hours, but I want it in 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating game because I know uh, even in the world where I watch my, my, my sons, uh, they're growing up and they take to the last day to do their homework, right, for the week. Right, just to get in at the last moment of time, it's just a, that natural whatever is it that uh, Parkinson's uh, law. Right, you give me two weeks, I'm going to take it. Right, how do I do it fast and get myself motivated to just do it, even though it's uh, I have more time or I believe I have more time? How do you, how do you convince? You're just wired that way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just uh, I guess I was born that way. My dad was a bit impatient too, so I guess it's part of my surroundings. It's just one of those things that, again, at the same time, there's nothing, everyone operates differently, right? Like there's, there's people in my life that, uh, that if I push them along like that, they actually just crack, right? Yeah. So it's, it's about being self-aware. You have to realize who are you? And this is where, where I was going. This is my point or long way of getting to my point is that uh, you have to become self-aware, realize who you are, what your strengths are, and be able to utilize that strength. Do not allow people to tell you who you should and shouldn't be and how you should act and shouldn't act and what you should and shouldn't do. Reality is be self-aware, know who you are and be true to yourself. That means that some people will not jive with you. Some people will not work well with you, but the ones that work well with you and do jive with you will probably be the best relationships you can build. Yeah, that's a, that's a tremendous insight. And you know, with the uh, world being global in nature, here we are, two different countries chatting over video, uh, anything possible in terms of connections. And there's only, what, ever 8 billion people in the world? You got to figure there's enough connections there <laughs> for everyone to find, you know, the right people, right? That Absolutely. Job. Which brings my point up, right? Like, it's about that abundance mindset. I believe there's plenty of business out there. And now that we're globalized, like you said, the opportunities are greater than before. So we have less of an excuse to be going after what we want than we did before. Yeah, it's crazy. So go back to me. So when when did it all start with you? What was your first sort of entrepreneurial sort of experience? What was that like? How did, what, what do you remember from it? Well, believe it or not, I started off as a DJ. Like I had a little DJ business and I didn't even want it. It was um, a means to an end. 
And uh, again, it goes back to what I was saying, where I wanted to always wanted to be a radio guy. And what ended up happening is that I wasn't a very good scholar. I didn't really want to go to school. I went to school because I was bribed to go. Prime example, I didn't want to go one day. I just said, I just started going. My dad said, well, school's today. I go, I don't want to go. So he basically let me use his car to go to school. So my, my, my motivation was I get to drive. That was my motivation to continue going to school, not learning. And it's just because everything drives with everybody differently. We all learn different ways. It's not that I didn't like learning. I just didn't like learning the traditional way. Right. So what happens, I want to be on the radio. So the two ways to do it is either through school. And we just have established that that's probably not going to be the best route for me. The second way to get on there is to become the most popular person. We are in so demand that regardless of your education, they're going to want you to be on. So that was the route I was going to try. So how the heck do I do it? Well, they're going to have their own announcers and whatever and all that. So that I'm not going to be able to just show up and just say, you know, hey, I'm going to be on your radio station today. It's just not going to work. So I thought the, the, the cheat way was become a DJ. I'll play at all the clubs, become popular at the clubs. A lot of times the radio stations go to the clubs. They, uh, you know, they they broadcast live from there. And if I happen to be the DJ there, I'm on radio. And that's mm-hmm. exactly what happened. At one point in time, I was on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And um, I got out of that when basically when the clubs dumped the radio, I dumped the clubs. <laughs> I just wasn't there for the clubs. Now, I wasn't going to tell the owner that because they would have got personally offended because, you know, egos go around in that business. But uh, it was the truth. It was my truth. I was there for the radio, and that's pretty much all I was there for. Uh, At a certain point in time, I started building my marketing business, or print and marketing business. And when that just became so big, I ended up getting so damn busy that uh, the whole uh, DJing thing just became not important. I wasn't progressing into the radio side as fast as I wanted to or as high as I wanted to. And it was always an on and off thing. And the print thing was just, it just became so damn bigger. I mean, put it this way, I ended up selling it when it was an eight-figure-a-year business. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So, But basically, it was an evolution. So you started off with the DJ business, which got me onto my radio you know, broadcasting. And then uh, from there, it turned into a marketing business. And I sold it. And uh, I sold that when uh, in 2007. And then I started, I built this online media business, which I had to close down. And I ended up closing that down when my parents got sick because I was at home. I stayed with my dad and my mom was in a retirement home at that point. She had Alzheimer's. So I ended up staying home with my dad for about two, three years. Then when he went to the retirement home to join my mom. So then at that point in time, I spent another two years trying to figure out what I wanted to do. That's how I got my real estate license. I thought I'm going to get my realtor's license because I'm going to open houses. Uh, instead of walking around to open houses and looking at houses just because I don't know what else to do with myself, I figured maybe there's an opportunity for to make money doing that since I like it. And my parents were landlords, so I, I've been accustomed to being around that industry. So I thought, what a great opportunity. So I got my realtor's license and, uh, you know, life, life uh, progresses, you grow, you, you, uh, find other opportunities. And well, here I am with my uh, realtor's license, my, uh, investment firm. And now I'm doing my podcast, which has to do with the media. Crazy. So, you know, obviously some of it is just your natural, you know, kind of uh, desire to move, right? And do stuff, right? Yeah. You're not going to sit complacent. But it's also, you kind of touch on, one, obviously with the the, the uh, being on radio, there was just a, there was a natural draw to it. And you may not be able to easily explain it, and maybe you can, but like there's, you know, we hear often these concepts of, hey, go for your passion, right? And, and that will drive you to success. Like what's your sort of philosophy on that kind of stuff? That is interesting. I got mixed feelings, right? See, here, here, it doesn't work for everybody. Everyone is different. Like, I don't th- believe in the whole follow your passion. Everything will work out. Oh, because you know what? You can get into a business that has no business left, right? Like, my passion mm-hmm. is selling typewriters. doesn't matter how much I love typewriters. You're going to have zero business at the end of the year. That's really what it comes down to. Now, so there is a point where that's true. Now, don't get me wrong. I also don't believe in, uh, oh, follow the money. You know, you can. Make, this is a billion-dollar industry. Because you know what? If you hate what you're doing, it doesn't matter what it could make. You won't be that person. Because that person who makes the so-called billion has such dedication and drive, there's no way you can put in that much dedication and drive and grit and persistence to get to any kind of 
respectable level because you're going to give up once you become miserable. Right. So there has to be some sort of balance. And I don't believe like there's balance where oh, you work nine to five and blah, blah, blah. No, balance is whatever works for you. Right. Balance is not, I, I don't believe in being comfortable. I also don't believe living in complete anxiety. Balance is like if your comfort level is here, you want to be one step above that where you're just a little paranoid. Not yeah. so paranoid that people think you're nuts, but paranoid enough that you got that drive still and you enjoy it. And that's why you have the drive. So there is a balance between, you know, realistic opportunity and passion. So if you can balance that out, then that works. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And it's, it's, it's one of those, I, and my wife always says, she's a teacher and she says, you know, that's where people get the most, uh, the learning, right? You're, you're pushing yourself. You're a little bit uncomfortable. It's not completely out of your world of possibilities, but it's, it's, it's still more than you can do today. And it pushes you to continue to, to kind of strive for it and, and, and makes you a little anxious a little bit, but not to the point where like you're cowering in the corner, right. Without, uh, you know, any, without any desire to do anything. Right. So it is, there is a balance there, but, you know, I think the, I've come to realize the, uh, the, the, uh, being uncomfortable tells you as a signal, Hey, this is probably a good direction, right? Cause it's going to be growth. It's going to be new opportunities possibly if you're positive about it, but you know, having a little worry is not so bad. <laughs> exactly. Now you don't have to go for the world. Too many people are trying to conquer the world. The reality mm -hmm. is if you do 1% better every single day, then that's 365% better each year. And 1% is not hard, to, not a you know, large target where you can't reach it. Well, it's, it's funny. You kind of, it, it is, it's those, these interesting sort of uh, comparisons because I, like you, I could feel it. Like you're just a driver. You're, you're, a, uh, you're a driver. You want to get things accomplished, but you also recognize and smart enough to realize some things kind of are gradual right? They take time to build just like our wealth, right? Compound interest, the whatever eighth wonder of the world. I make it's a, such a simple concept, hard to do because we are so impatient. <laughs> we yeah, exactly. Get, we're going to get rich fast, but like, you know, to your point, some of these things take time, right? And just like you're even your entrepreneur journey. I mean, the, you know, going from, you know, the DJ to the radio and then sort of migrating to the, the what was it? Print business. I mean, you're going different directions and had to pivot along the way. And now you're into real estate and, and mortgages. So, you know, it's your acceptance of, you know, sometimes the path might have to detour, right? But absolutely. You, right. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it comes back to what I, what I was saying earlier. It's also self-awareness. There will be in a certain time in your life where I think things always adjust and change. There's going to be a certain point in your life. You're going to realize that something's not working for you anymore. And rather than trying to fight it, the first thing you should ask is why is this not working anymore? Yeah. And if it's um, something you realize that's not going to change, that you're just going to have to push through something you don't want to be there anymore, then it, it, sometimes that's the time to move on. You got to really like, it's just as important to know when to say yes, as it is to know when to say no. That's then, a hard one. Yeah. Uh, and again, I have no problem dropping things. You know what I mean? Like if, if something doesn't serve me anymore, I'm out and I'm good with that. Yeah, you know, I, I I use the poker reference. Sometimes you just have to fold. Yeah, right. You yeah. got to move on because you got you're fighting for another day, right? And you sometimes you just need to know that hey, you know, maybe it's time to move on, right, and do something else. And focus. Right, and that's why I said it becomes being self aware. A lot of times, yeah. people based on what's going on with the business, right? Oh, you can't make money in this. Well, look around the world. You know, you're in whatever business you're in. You mean to tell me there's nobody in the world making money? <laughs> right? No, it's you're not making money. And that's what I mean by being self-aware because you have to ask, why aren't you making, why is it not working for you? And the thing is, if you don't have the passion for it, then that's the cue. If you're going to work and you're miserable and upset, it's not that there's no money to be made. There's no money to be made for you. You're not passionate about it. You don't want to do what you have to do to make it work. So that's when you fold. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. And I have run across a lot of folks who are, you know, have followed just like my own path, um, working at a corporate job for a number of years and, and recognizing it wasn't fulfilling anymore. And it was time to fold. It took me a lot longer to fold than, you know, in retrospect that, 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 that I did, but it, listen, it happened, right? I can't change it now anyway. So for people who are maybe 
thinking about that, right? What are what are some things that you would encourage them to think about as they maybe venture out into the wild, wild world <laughs> of entrepreneurship? What are some things that they, one, being self-aware, right, about yourself sounds like a key thing. What, what else maybe yeah. should they be thinking about? Uh, second thing is being financially prepared before you make the jump. Mm. And here's what I mean. Uh, it's businesses take a long time to start off and it sometimes takes longer than you expect. And what ends up happening, you can go to six to nine months without even seeing a dime. Mm. And it doesn't mean the business isn't working. It means it's not established. Now, if you quit your job and you start your business and you go nine months without an income, what does your finance look like? Don't base it on your line of credit, base it on your savings. And it's easy to say it, but the reality is when you're living off a line of credit, you're always working in the negative. And when you're working in the negative, you're always uh, got a second worry. It's like you're carrying two burdens now. Yeah. And that can influence your decision, which is the first thing you shouldn't be doing, is allowing finances to influence the decision. Doing the right thing is what should influence your decision. And when you're living a financial burden, it's very hard to do that because you're always worried about what if I don't make that payment? What if this happens? And now that's that's driving your decisions, not what the right thing is. So do it with a nest egg. Have six to nine months in your bank. We you have six to nine months worth of living and business expenses in your bank account, then do the leap. There's nothing wrong with starting part-time, doing a couple hours after work every day until you have enough in your bank account that you can survive that nine months, then take the leap. No, that's great advice. And I, I think there's, a, you know, certainly in entrepreneurial world and business world, it's like, we, we think we can do so much within a year, but we under what's it? We, we overestimate what we can get done in a year, but we underestimate what we can get done in five years, right? And you got to be patient with it because you have to to build and grow your business. You're going to get better at it, but you know it's not like you're going to become a pro overnight. In this, that's true. Whatever and whatever you're doing. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, and a lot of things I'm telling you is not necessarily because I'm wise and whatever. I'm telling you some of the mistakes I've done. You know what I mean? Like I, I, like I said, my biggest problem is lack of patience. I want to do something. I do it right away. I'm the type, I have an idea. It's a great idea. And I don't like my job. I don't even know if I'd finish the day, let alone <laughs> put in the two weeks. You know what I mean? Like I'd yeah, be yeah, out, yeah, yeah. right? And then even if I did that on credit, put it this way, my credit, my credit, uh, my credit limits, my mortgage is smaller than what my credit limits are. Mm. Put it that way. And, um, it didn't happen because uh, it's not because I'm a superstar. It happened because, or because I, I, I'm so rich because I'm not. I mean, I'm not broke either, but that's not the point. I mean, all I'm saying is the fact that it happened because I made a lot of stupid choices and I was able to maintain those stupid choices. And what ends up happening is the more debt you were able to get into, the more you were able to get yourself out of, the more the banks are going to trust you. And the more they trust you, the more they give you. So when people say I got a high you know, amount of credit, it's a, really a symbol of how stupid you were, right? Because that's what it comes down to. It means you used a lot of debt. That's why they gave you more. Yeah. Right? So it happened to work out for me most times. But that, that I don't shouldn't bank on that. That was luck. Yeah. I mean, that was luck because it did the right thing day in, day out consistently, and I held through. But what happened, there is a certain point in time that you could be so far deep, you're not sleeping well anymore. Now that's affecting you, like I said. So that's why I said, going back, my decision would have been I would probably build a better nest egg. I mean, sure, I would I would take the line of credit that, I, you know, as a backup just in case. But the truth of the matter is, I would have done it on cash first. Yeah. And that's, it's, you know, we, in the in the time of this recording in 2024, I mean, there's there's certainly hints of it. You know, this whole economy globally is over leveraged. Yes, um, yeah. and you're going to start potentially seeing or companies that just no longer can get credit. They can't keep themselves afloat, and you know they're going to go under. Right? There's a lot of people who've used it, and so it's really. I think you know at a micro level, at a small business, I think it's really hugely important to to be ready for that and have the liquidity because, to your point, it's not going to happen as fast as you probably want it to. Um, in terms of success, it's hard, right? And it's it's the reality. You might get lucky, but for most people who've experienced it, like John, it's not that easy, 
right? And uh, take some, take some, take some time. So, um, so you got the self awareness. I think that's that's even to me like, you know, there's people who are not self aware and they're in their fifties and sixties, right? <laughs> Themselves, yeah. they've been just following, and and I was guilty of it myself for a good portion of my life. Like I'm just kind of following the exterior, external sort of uh, guidance system, if you will. Like I'm in the my best analogy. I love analogies. Like I'm in the, <laughs> I'm in the I'm in the back seat. I was never really always in the driver's seat, right? I was in the back seat, kind of getting led. Um, self awareness requires you get in the driver's seat. And you know yourself, what you're passionate about, and and then take some steps to do it. Um, so what else besides those two? I mean, that's those are two really good points. Anything else you think that's really you know were big learnings for you through the course of your you know your journey? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's uh, consistency as well, right? Whatever you do, you have to be consistent with it. Have your goals, have your objectives, and then be consistent with it. Give, allow it enough time to take course. Like don't give up something because three weeks later it didn't work. Average thing takes three to six months before it even gets noticed. So have a plan, follow it. I would, I'm very, very diligent, right? Like, and if I have a plan, prime example, my podcasts are uh, every Wednesdays and Fridays. I don't miss a beat. I don't skip a beat. It's every day at those times. I'll never miss it. Uh, am I rigid about it? Yes. Because I, uh, consistency is everything right and mm -hmm. it gets to a point where you're doing it so regular that people look for it and the only way that's going to happen is if you're consistent if you're all over the place nobody knows what to look for eventually if something becomes too hard they stop doing it right and that comes even with a shopping experience right we, like how, how many times do people have an idea things become difficult you go to screen one screen two by the time you get to screen three you're saying i ah, forget it i'll just buy it. i'll do this later and later never happens <laughs> So, uh, because it became too hard to shop, right? So, and the other, the, la the, the last point is be customer oriented. Be very, very customer oriented. That's probably the most important part. And I'll give you an example. Um, there's going to be times you're going to have to take a hit because you screwed up. Uh, and I've seen this too many times that I've had relationships broken because of this. And uh, some of it is, again, because I'm a little bit rigid. And what I mean, the prime example, Tom, just say we make a deal. Um, I'm looking for something and you just say you can do it. Just say it's programming. And you tell me you can do the uh, job for me for a thousand bucks. And I said, is that a concrete price? Yes. So it's not an estimate. It's a concrete. Yeah. Also, what happens is something changes. You made a mistake or, you know, somebody didn't, sh you know, you, you lost a couple of people that were helping with the job. The new employees cost you more. So now all of a sudden, you're, you, you know, your cost was originally 700. Now your cost is like a thousand. So you're going to break even or 1100. So you're going to lose a hundred dollars doing my mm -hmm. job. So now, you know, the natural instinct is, is to come back to me and say, oh, well, you know, things changed. You know, I, I lost a couple of people. The new people are costing me another $300. And, uh, well, I can't get it done. It's going to be like $1,300. Well, what happens is you just took your problem and tried to make it mine. And that's the worst way to do business. What ends up happening is at that point in time, you didn't give yourself enough of a buffer. That's where the problem is. Obviously, the people you were working with weren't uh, embedded into your business to the point that where you can trust them and rely on them. So the mistake is actually yours. And um, you're trying to punish the customer for your mistake. So what ends up happening is the right thing to do at that point in time was to be honor your commitment. Take the $100 loss. And then the next time saying, hey, we did it at this time, but if we have to repeat it, my expenses went up, price will change, or this is the one-time price or whatever. So on the next one, you don't lose, but on this one, you take the hit. That would be the proper thing to do because, you know, it's like going to... Uh, so like you go to work and uh, you agree to work for somebody for 80 grand a year. And then somebody turns around and says, ah, oh, well, you know, we thought we were going to make 2 million, but you only make 1.5. So we're only going to pay you 60,000 this year. Yeah. You know, if you say that to someone, they say, well, that's wrong. So why is it wrong for you to not honor your commitment, even though you quoted it wrong? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and that's the thing. I've had that happen a couple of times where uh, it just burned the relationship. So... Customer service is everything, right? Too many times people think the short term, think long term. And if that person could be a repeat customer, why would you want to piss somebody off because you made the mistake of miscalculating when you can have them as a repeat customer? Like, is it better to make $100 now and never see them again? Or is it better to make $50 at a time and see them 20 times? Right, right. 
it's 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 the you know it, again one of these uh you know simple concepts like you know we can get so short term thinking like we've got to think long term unless unless you don't expect to be here on this earth very long right thinking long term is going to likely be more beneficial just sometimes it's harder right what's that thing that uh what was that what was that the marshmallow challenge with the little kids and oh, they said, you know with the uh, I'll give you uh, if I if you I'll give you the marshmallow and if you could wait a little bit I'll give you two more or something like that and and it was it, most of them you know couldn't take it they had to eat it right? yeah yeah they yeah wait right but like the, the studies were showing like these people who could wait those turn out to be the, some of the most successful people in life because they are patient they're they're going to go through um, some pain to get long term gain of things and it's it was just. I just find it fascinating, like these little simple things like that. It it seems so simple. It's hard though, right? In life, right? When you have so many stresses and in uh, you know near term priorities, um, but you got to do like like John was saying. I mean, sometimes you got to take ownership, right? Yep. Of your mistake, right? Think about your clients. Think about what you can do to to make their lives better. And the chances are, if you do that right, you're going to be rewarded too, right? Absolutely. In life. Now, the other thing, even to touch upon the passion part here. Now, every business, even if you're following your passion, there's going to be parts of the business you're going to hate, no matter what, right? Like, there's no such thing as doing everything that's perfect and not doing things that are not. At the end of the day, every business has the same requirements. Prime example, just say my uh, podcasting is my business and I love to podcast. Well, I can podcast and be on camera all day long, but someone's got to edit Someone, you're going to need an accounting department because there's something called taxes. You can't just say, well, I don't like taxes, so Mr. Government, I'm not paying you because I don't really want to file it because I don't like doing it. It's not my passion. Right. Right? It doesn't work that way. So where you have to, where I'm going with this is learning where to prioritize. Don't work in your business as much as working on your business. Do what you do really well yourself and do it really well. Or do what will expand your business the most and do that more more often. And the stuff that you really can't handle, the stuff that, you know, like will totally drive you nuts, delegate it. That's the time to hire and farm that out and let that other person handle the stuff that's like actually holding your business back. Yeah, it's tremendous. And it's, it's you know, tumbling is, is, is we, we are taught like we're, you know, we're, we're tr we try to do everything. Right. And the reality is we're not really meant to. Um, we don't have the capacity or, or passion or interest in learning everything. We couldn't even if we tried, you know, humbled more and more each day how how little I do know about everything. <laughs> There's just too much to know. It, but so now I recognize the importance of of uh, um, leveraging people who know di have different skill sets and have different perspectives because it makes me a much stronger individual because I can uh, learn from them and they hopefully they can learn from me and we're better for it both ends. Um, and you got to have that kind of mindset because um, you can't get too egotistical about yourself. Right. You know, some of the, yeah, I could, I could see that a lot. Right. I, I know better. I've stopped learning. <laughs> <laughs> no need to learn anymore. I said, I tell my kids all the time, you've got for as long as you're on this earth, you're learning. Right? Yeah. hundred percent. If you want to be more valuable. So, so as we move into 2024, like this year as we're starting, like what's what's got you excited, motivated for this year? What, what's on what's in your world? Well, I could tell you what does not have me excited. New Year's resolutions. I don't have those. I don't believe in those either. Um, now the new trend out there is having the word of the year. Oh, yay. Right. That word is going to make the world a difference out there. Now, don't get me wrong. I do have a word of the year, things that you're focused on. That's called just goals and outcomes. Like my word, my word of the year is clarity. Mm. And uh, that's because I spent the last year or two all over the place trying to do everything for everybody. And, you know, just by tracking, keyword there is tracking, is uh, by tracking everything, I see what's what I've neglected, what has not had my attention. I saw some stuff that has not had my attention, which was a good thing because it doesn't deserve my attention. Mm -hmm. And that's the stuff I should farm out. I've also seen areas where I've had too much attention in and maybe I shouldn't have put that much attention into it. So I was able to look at the data, look at the things I've tracked, look at where I focused that and, and I've been all over the place. So this year is all about cleaning up my mess, uh, having a clear vision, a clear outcome and a clear direction and maybe uh, streamlining more. 
yeah, clarity is so huge. I, I, you know, we can, for you, you probably, I feel like I can multitask, but it's probably usually not very good. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. And that's right. the thing, right? Time blocking is a big part of it too, right? Because if you time block things and you focus on things based on on, the, on your time blocking, that helps a lot. Um, and there's a certain point in time, you, again, it goes back to knowing what not to do as well. There's certain things I've got to let go. I'm debating on where I'm going to let go, but there's certain things I'm going to drop this year. Yeah. Hence the yeah. clarity. I got to figure out where do I see myself in five years? What's going to take me there? And what do I not need to do anymore? Someone joked. I, someone said the other day, it was like a, a not to do list, right? Something like that. And yeah. it's like, you know, we're always, people are so enamored with to do lists. I like lists too. So, but then you look at uh, like the hundred things I have to do. And it's like, it's, it's, it's sometimes deflating. But what if you could actually say, you know what, for my own benefit, my uh, um, my uh, emotional state and focus, like these are 10 things I won't do anymore, right? Um, that's freeing in a lot of ways, you know, even though society says you're supposed to do it. Well, maybe I shouldn't. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Whatever reason. So, um, you know, one of the thing, things I truly believe in, in, you know, obviously I work in the... You, you're an investor, right? So you know real estate investing, and and I think of finance wise, it's that's where bun, abundance and wealth usually is equated to. But I, I do believe like I'm, I'm striving for wealth in in all areas of my life, right? And where I can for health, my relationships, uh, whatever it is. So for you, um, outside of your business and sort of uh, financial world, like what do you feel wealthy with, right, in your life, and that you feel proud with? Oh, I, you know what? I live with gratitude. I am full of gratitude. I've, I have not lacked anything in life. Uh, I've, uh, you know what I mean? I'm not saying it was easy. Let's, let's be clear about that. I've had a lot of very rough spots. You know what I mean? I've even gone through bankruptcy when I was, I think it was like 21 at that time. But the point I'm getting at is, so it hasn't been a clear path all the way. Uh, that's one thing I noticed. It's life is up and down. You know what I mean? It's never straight like everybody wants it to be. But um, where I'm going with this is the fact that even through the tribula tri tribulations or tribulations, yeah, or, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's, you got to enjoy the journey. So I've been very blessed. I've been uh, very uh, lucky. And, you know, I mean, I've had a lot of learning lessons and I realize I'm going to have a lot more. So in terms of my personal life, I don't think I can complain about anything. I, I, I like, you know what I mean? For the lack of a, a better description, I could say I've had the grace of God. And, I, and, and, you know, what is my blessing is also my curse. And what I mean by that is, that's also what I fear, losing that grace of God. Hmm. Like things have worked out for me. And if you're going to blame God for all the bad, you got to give him credit for the good too. And that, and that applies to everything in life, not just spirituality. Right. Like, you know, you can't take the credit for when something goes right and then blame somebody else when it goes wrong. It all starts with yourself and the actions you do. And again, I'm thankful because anything I've gone through is what made me today who I am today. I, I couldn't change something and be who I am today. So it, it's it's part of that journey. It's part of who you become. And if I changed anything else, I wouldn't be me. It is quite amazing when you think about it that way, you know, all the, the different life choices and experience we've had really have, you know, we're all, what's that? We're all unique snowflakes, snowflakes in this world, right? <laughs> we're all genetically different. We're all sort of different backgrounds and journeys. It's just fascinating to learn it because, you know, every time I turn around, I just see someone else's uh, new DNA, right? Even, even though I, I connect with a lot of things you say, um, you know, it's it's really cool to see. And I and I, I know for listeners out there who are trying to figure out themselves, becoming self-aware, all those great things I'm sharing about, like, just know that you're unique and you have much to deliver in this world. Um, you have to maybe push yourself to grow and learn it. But, you know, as, as John's evidence that you can, right, and you can experience it, you can find more fulfillment um, and uh, go on your own journey instead of someone else's. So I really encourage you folks to re-listen to this, um, reach out, John, where, where can folks reach out to you? And you've got some great podcasts. I was listening to a bunch of them and, you know, great guests on there too, uh, that, 
the John Papaloni, uh, is it podcast, right? Is it, is that what yeah, it's John called? Papaloni show podcast. Yeah. It's uh and you can reach me at my, on my website. You can get everything at John TV. That's J O H N P A P A L O N I dot TV. And that'll take you to my personal website, which will have a link to everything. That's wonderful. Thank you. So I know we only touched on a little bit, some details, but like, listen, this is, this is why it's a cool thing. Like, it's not like, uh, can always uh, bring you back to share more details around um, what you guys are doing in the real estate world. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff I, I saw on your website. So um, I would urge everyone to go check it out. John's a great guy. He's, he's, uh, he's a good spirit and um, you know, it's uh, hopefully he's helped you along this journey. I know he's helped me with mine. So I appreciate John, you, you sharing your Thank time you. and your expertise and your journey with us. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining me on this episode today. I really am grateful for you as listeners to the Cranial Pride podcast. I hope you're getting some tremendous value out of it and hopefully pushing you along your journey to financial freedom. You know, I put this podcast together really to help sort of help you get more educated around your finances so that you feel empowered to live the life that you really want. And if you like the content that you heard today or watched, then I would encourage you to go to my website, perennialpride.com. There's tons of other content there. And you can access my book, Wealth Beyond the Numbers. You can buy it there on my website. It's a aggregation of a lot of great tips and tools I've learned to not only build my wealth in my, my accounts, but build wealth in my life and abundance and joy and something that has a lot of my experiences in the journey that I've been on personally. Hopefully that can be also of value to you as you sort of move forward. So thanks again for being a Cranial Pride listener and we'll see you on the next episode.